had a great call with President Putin. We're talking about peace in Syria, very important. We're talking about North Korea. We had a call that lasted almost an hour and a half. When it comes to things overseas, like how to deal with Russia, this guy comes at this with a completely uh, fresh set of eyes, and he's willing to sort of turn everything upside down. There is no better example than Officer Brian Shaw who gave his life serving this community. I think I love you. Isn't that what life is made of? Former teen idol and Partridge Family star David Cassidy died at a Florida hospital, committed for multiple organ failures. Drumstick, you are hereby pardoned. <laughs> about come Thanksgiving Day, allegedly anyway. A live shot of New York City for you there. Traffic already building all across the country as people head home for the holiday. Good morning. You're watching Fox and Friends First on this Wednesday. I'm Heather Childers. We appreciate you joining us. But right away, we want to get started with this Fox News alert for you. A U.S. Navy plane crashing into the ocean with 11 crew members on board while heading to an aircraft carrier. This happened off the coast of Okinawa. Todd Pirro, a uh, Todd Pyro is here live with the breaking details. Good morning, Todd. Good morning, Heather. Right now, eight of those American service members have been found by Japanese forces. Their condition unknown. Search and rescue operations for the remaining three still underway at this hour. Now, according to the Navy, the plane, a C-2 Greyhound carrying 11 crew and passengers, crashed into the Pacific Ocean while on its way to the aircraft carrier USS Ronald Reagan. That aircraft carrier, part of the Seventh Fleet. Based in Japan, it was in the Philippine Sea when the crash happened around 2.45 in the afternoon Japan time. That is about 12.45 this morning East Coast time. The Navy adds that the names of crew and passengers are being withheld pending notification to their next of kin. The cause of the crash not immediately clear. Now, keep in mind that this is the same 7th Fleet that had two fatal accidents in Asian waters already this year. The USS John S. McCain and an oil tanker collided near Singapore in August. That left 10 U.S. sailors dead and seven sailors died in June when the USS Fitzgerald and a container ship collided off Japan. Those incidents prompted the removal of eight top Navy officers from their post, including the 7th Fleet commander. And just this week, an Air Force pilot died. Another was injured after their jet crashed near the U.S.-Mexico border. We, of course, will continue to stay on top of this breaking news and bring you any updates as we get them. Yeah. Heather, back over to you. As we get those names, our prayer with those families, of Absolutely. course. Todd, great to have you here with us this morning. Thank Thanks. you. That was my favorite. Let us know what yours was. Well, President Trump vowing to do his part to bring peace to the Middle East following an hour-long phone call with Vladimir Putin. And this is coming on the heels of the rare high-profile meeting between Putin and Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. And Griff Jenkins joins us now live <laughs> from our nation's capital with some brand new details on the high-stakes talks. Good morning, Griff. Good morning, Heather. As the president headed out for Mar-a-Lago for Thanksgiving, he said that hour-long call was a great one in which the two leaders discussed not only the situation in Syria, but also the threat of North Korea. We had a great call with President Putin. We're talking about peace in Syria, very important. We're talking about North Korea. We had a call that lasted almost an hour and a half. Uh, we just put out a release on the call. Uh, but we're talking very strongly about bringing peace to Syria. We're talking very strongly about North Korea and Ukraine. Now, the call comes a day after President Putin met with Syria's President Bashar Assad, seeking a political path forward in war-torn Syria, one that would include coordination of anti-terror efforts with the U.S., and the call reflects the White House's desire to thaw relations with Russia, a point that President Trump repeatedly made clear on his recent trip to Asia and going all the way back to the campaign trail. I think it's very important to get along with Russia. I feel that having Russia in a friendly posture as opposed to always fighting with them is an asset. I hope that we get along great with Putin because it would be great to have Russia with a good relationship. The two world leaders also focusing on the critical need to increase international pressure on North Korea and Heather. This is significant because President Putin is set for a trilateral summit later this week with the leaders of Iran and Turkey. We'll see what that produces. All right, Griff Jenkins live for us. Thank you, Griff. Hope you have a great Thanksgiving, by the way. You too.
Well, jury deliberations, meantime, now underway for the illegal immigrant accused of murdering Kate Steinle. Juan Francisco Lopez Sanchez, who had been deported five times, claims that he accidentally pulled the trigger in 2015 on a pier in the sanctuary city of San Francisco. Well, Steinle dying in her father's arms. Jurors must decide whether the shooting was, in fact, intentional. Well, Charlie Rose is out of a job. CBS, PBS, and Bloomberg TV firing the anchor over sexual harassment allegations. And the Washington Post reporting that dozens of women have accused Rose of unwanted sexual advances, lewd phone calls, and groping. Now, the veteran journalist denies any wrongdoing. And CBS This Morning, meantime, now needs a new anchor to take Rose's spot. And apparently, yep, right there, Oprah Winfrey, top of the list. That's according to Page Six, who says that the network is begging Gail King's best friend to at least fill in until Christmas. I wonder what they pay her. Well, President Trump, meantime, breaking his silence on the Roy Moore sexual harassment scandal. Our commander-in-chief refusing to endorse the Republican Senate candidate in Alabama's race, but is not calling for Moore to withdraw. We don't need a liberal person in there, a Democrat. He totally denies it. He says it didn't happen. And, you know, you have to listen to him also. You're talking about, he said 40 years ago this did not happen. Moore has been accused of inappropriate contact with minors nearly four decades ago, which he denies. He is reportedly considering legal action against his accusers. Well, bringing politics into the conversation at this year's Thanksgiving dinner. Wouldn't that be great? No, apparently wouldn't be. It would be a recipe for disaster. <laughs> Jackie Banyas joins us now with more on whether most Americans are opting to pass the turkey without the politics. First off, that's an amazing show. Yeah. So funny. <laughs> yes. Okay. We want to talk about politics or do we not yeah. want to talk about politics? I, I say no. Okay. No at Heather's table. This year <laughs> has no shortage of highly charged political stories. That's for sure. But should they be off the menu at your family's Thanksgiving dinner? You decide. According to a new NPR PBS NewsHour Marist poll, 58% of Americans, they're dreading the thought of talking about politics during Thanksgiving dinner. Compared to 31% who say they are eager to talk about politics there at the table. So what major political uh, topics may come up when gathering with your friends and family? Well, here are some of the most heated issues that we've covered here on Fox and Friends First this year. The investigation into Trump campaign and Russian collusion could definitely come up. Or let's not forget the series of bombshell claims by former interim DNC chairman, uh, Chair Donna Brazile, which she shelled out in her book, The Hacks, including her claims that the DNC rigged the primaries in favor of Hillary Clinton. That's a big one. And what about President Trump's push to build a wall? to protect and secure our southern border with Mexico. Build that wall. Build that wall. Build that wall. On the other hand, GQ magazine suggesting that it's your civic duty, Heather, to ruin your family's Thanksgiving. Oh. Yes, by bringing up President Trump ah. quotes uh, for America. Mm. But uh, for those looking to just enjoy that turkey dinner, there are plenty of survival guides out there on the Internet if you yeah. need to figure out how to manage your way through this dinner. I think the only controversial thing should be who gets the drumstick. Of Maybe the turkey. your dinner table, Heather, yeah. but I don't know. Mine are you going to talk politics at your table? Mine get a little heated. We have really? some people from the show coming to my uh -huh. house, so we'll see. Ah, so maybe some difference of opinions there. Maybe I'll just, they won't talk about my pie. They'll talk about politics <laughs> and forget about how bad the food is. I'm going to ask about your food, though. Don't you dare. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Jackie. Yeah. Appreciate it. And we, of course, want to hear from everybody at home, always. Uh, what's the number one issue that you want to avoid or bring to the table this Thanksgiving? Let Jackie know on Facebook Live, Twitter, and Instagram. And she'll be back to share some of your comments live. I think she probably is a good cook. Very good cook. <laughs> well, the time now is about 11 minutes after the top of the hour. And President Trump speaking one-on-one -on -one with his Russian counterpart. Why our next guest, a former CIA analyst, by the way, says it's a big move in the right direction. I think I have the right to stand and respect the flag and do our traditional national anthem without being interfered with. And then got booted from the Booster Club. I've never put a pair of these guys on in my life. Wait, oh, will you take your shoes off first? Oh, yes. Yep. Oh, okay. This is quite the job.
I can't wait for this. Meet the farmers behind a Thanksgiving favorite. Carly Shimkus takes us on a cranberry cruise coming up. Welcome back to Fox and Friends. First, President Trump speaking with his Russian counterpart, Vladimir Putin, by phone for more than an hour, we're told. And the two talking about a range of national security issues, including ways to resolve the Syrian civil war and pressure North Korea into giving up. Here to weigh in is former CIA analyst Fred Fleet. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Hello, Heather. Good morning and happy Thanksgiving. Yes, to you too. First of all, let's start with this White House readout on the meeting. And they went on to say that the two presidents affirmed the importance of fighting terrorism together throughout the Middle East and Central Asia and agreed to explore ways to further cooperate in the fight against ISIS, Al Qaeda, the Taliban, and other terrorist organizations. So a lot covered in this uh, meeting that apparently went on for over an hour. Uh, what do you think about that? Well, three quick thoughts. First of all, the president is absolutely right that the United States has to find a way to get along with and cooperate with Russia. And c conversations and dialogue between Putin and President Trump are a good thing. At the same time, I'm a little concerned that Putin didn't just call President Trump. He called all the leaders of the Middle East. He's trying to continue to dominate the Middle East. Mm -hmm. And this is a product of Barack Obama's leading from behind plan. And I wanted and, to, can I ask you a little bit more about that before we sure. move beyond uh, the Middle East, Syria specifically? Because the way I understand it, our goal in Syria was to not keep Bashar al-Assad in power, but that has been, always been the goal of Russia and Iran, now Turkey. So do you think in terms of these meetings that are happening that perhaps the United States, perhaps President Trump is changing that goal? Well, that goal was changed a long time ago. Because of the power vacuum, Russia established a presence in Syria, so did Iran, and frankly, there's no prospect of removing Assad from power now. We can talk about that as a goal, but frankly, there's no reasonable way of that, to ha of that happening unless the U.S. invades Syria, and the American people doesn't want that. So we need some creative diplomacy to try to find a way to stabilize the situation. I got to tell you, I don't want to see it on the terms of Iran and Russia, mm -hmm. but, but still, dialogue between President Trump and President Putin on this is still a good thing. And possibly some sort of leverage there when it comes to North Korea and Russia assisting us with North Korea? That's my third point. I think what we're seeing here is President Trump wants to strike a deal on North Korea. He's worried that although it looks like we have China on our side, Russia could throw Kim Jong-un a lifeline. And it's crucial we keep Russia on board. And I'm wondering if Trump's trying to find a way to negotiate with Putin on this. And, and what would that be? Well, we have to find a solution to the situation in Ukraine. We're never going to use sanctions and threats to get Russia out of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. We have to find some, maybe some type of peacekeeping arrangement in Ukraine, maybe a way we can resolve tensions. That's something Putin's been talking about. Uh, but I, I, I think there has to be some solution. There must be something Russia wants that we could trade to get its cooperation in North Korea. Yeah, that will be interesting for sure. Uh, Fred, thank you so much for your insight. We appreciate it. Good to be here. Have a great Thanksgiving. Well, the time now is about 19 minutes after the top of the hour and terrorists using cars and trucks as murdering machines. But what if they could remotely take control of your car, killing millions of people? Uh, the terrifying new warning that you need to hear. And social media set on fire after three dozen former SNL women write an open letter backing up Senator Al Franken. Carly Shimka is here with a furious reaction online. Up next. Good Welcome back to Fox and Friends. First, a furious backlash this morning after three dozen former SNL women write an open letter backing Senator Al Franken defending their former colleague. At Carly Shimkus with Fox News Headlines 24-7, Sirius XM here uh, with how social media is sounding off. So a lot of people not happy about this. Yeah, this is a big move. 36 women who worked with Senator Al Franken during his time on Saturday Night Live have come together to defend him. This after two women are accusing the Minnesota Democrat of sexual misconduct. In a letter, uh, Senator Al Franken's former co-workers say this, we feel compelled to stand up for Al Franken, whom we have all had the pleasure of working with over the years on SNL. What Al did was stupid and foolish, and we think it was appropriate for him to apologize to Ms. Tweeden and to the public. We would like to acknowledge that no, not one of us ever experienced any 
inappropriate behavior. You know, some on social media, Heather, think that this, although it's, you know, a good statement, could make it more difficult for victims of any kind to come forward in the future. Sarah says it doesn't matter if 36 women came forward and said they didn't feel disrespected by Al Franken. It only takes one woman to come forward to say she did. Don't undermine victims. Don't downplay harassment. Don't use your fame to intimidate. Lara also says, how is it difficult for grown adults to understand that someone who is nice to you is still capable of harassing and abusing others? Others, though, say that it is important to hear from uh, women who worked with Senator Franken to understand the, you know, his entire character. But now at least a, a one other woman at least has come forward now uh, saying that he did the same thing to her. Yeah, big Lindsay deal. Lindsay yeah. yeah. Well, Ryan Zinke getting some props, and this involves Cecil the Lion. Yeah, it does. So an animal rights Facebook group attempted to expose Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke of heartless big game hunting using this picture right here. That's an elephant in the background. Only problem is that's not Secretary Zinke. The oh. Cecil the Lion Facebook page uh, said this. Here is a trophy in big game hunter Secretary of Interior Ryan Zinke appointed by Donald Trump to the most powerful wildlife well welfare position in the country, possibly the world. Well, Mr. Zinke, who is a former Navy SEAL, by the way, had a response <laughs> saying the only thing I've hunted in Africa is terrorists. Love Big it. time response that a whole lot of people <laughs> liked, like David, who said that clattering sound is the mic dropping. <laughs> another Twitter user says, and with that, millions of snowflakes <laughs> melted. And another tweet says, thank you for your service. The left will stop at nothing to destroy someone that they hate and the media will assist. It yeah. does kind of look like him, but uh, fake yeah. news. Yeah. F for yes. fake news for this Hashtag story right fake here. news That's for sure. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, so finally, uh, President Trump joking that he can't overturn the uh, pardon of Tater and Tot. That's right. Take a listen to this from the uh, Turkey pardoning ceremony yesterday. I have been very active in overturning a number of executive actions by my predecessor. However, I have been informed by the White House Counsel's Office that Tater and Tot's pardons cannot, under any circumstances, be revoked. Oh, that's good news, right? So uh, Tater and Tot, they're getting new neighbors because Drumstick and Wishbone, yesterday's turkeys, are going to be moving to the same farm. Oh. So they'll have some new friends. Yeah. Wishbone, what, Drumstick, Tater and Tot. Yeah, that's yeah, right. I was All saying cute earlier, names. I love their names. All right. <laughs> Carly, thank you so much. Have thank a great you Thanksgiving. Very much. You too. Well, the time now is 26 minutes after the top of the hour. And breaking right now, a Navy plane goes down with 11 people on board, the latest on an urgent search and rescue mission that's underway right now. And what do President Trump and Charles Manson possibly have in common? Well, a whole lot, according to Newsweek magazine. The sick comparison creating a firestorm of controversy. And we're back with a Fox News alert for you. A desperate search.